Hello everyone and a very warm welcome to St Michael's Church today and uh, a very happy Easter from the Messy Church team. We're so glad you've been able to join us and to find out a bit more about the real meaning of Easter. Firstly, Sarah, our wonderful youth worker, has got a word for us. Hi everyone, it's Sarah here. Um, I just want to say I really hope that you have enjoyed the messy church packs that we've been delivering over the six weeks leading up to Easter. I hope you enjoyed the chocolate at the end. Um, and if anyone would like to join any of our youth groups, uh, we run youth groups for um, children of primary school age from age eight upwards. And... Uh, also youth groups for young people who are of secondary school age as well. So if you want any details about when they restart after the Easter holidays, then please get in touch. And we hope you have a really, really lovely Easter. Bye. Thank you, Sarah. That's great. And uh, we, we all know that we owe Sarah a very big thank you for all the great messy church crafts and activities that she's been preparing for Lent and now up to Easter. Um, and also big thank you to Hilary and Gloria for their creative work and to DJ and Daniel for distributing the packs to families. So now we're going to go back in time to listen to some of the people who were there 2,000 years ago as the events of the first Maundy Thursday Good Friday and Easter Day were unfolding. And of course, our puppet friends are going to help us along the way, or at least they're supposed to be helping us along the way. Easter is a time of daffodils, hot cross buns, spring lambs and chocolate eggs. When we all remember how um, the Easter lamb laid a chocolate egg that was hidden in a tomb and then stolen. But then what happened then? None of that happened. None of it, except in your head. So what is Easter about? I'm glad you asked. Easter is the story of how Jesus lives. I thought Jesus died. He did, but now he lives. If you only remember one thing about this story, and even that seems optimistic, remember that Jesus lives. We're going to see what really happened. The story is in all four Gospels. Oh, I know these. They're Matthew, John, uh, Paul, uh, Ringo, uh, Frodo, Hermione. Matthew. Mark, Luke and John. But we're going to follow Luke's account. So we're in Jerusalem, a city on the edge of the Roman Empire, and lots of people aren't very happy about that. It's about 36 AD, just about tea time, which is also known as the Last Supper. I feared the worst. When 13 blokes book the party room, it's normally pretty grim in there afterwards. Especially when they order wine. Although, apparently, this Jesus can make his own. Loads of it. And bread. Don't ask me how. My husband, Isaac, can barely make a pitta when he has all the ingredients. Anyway, it was a very quiet evening in the end. I was not listening at the door. <laughs> this one's a bit too thick. But... It didn't sound like much of a party, which is weird. I mean, it's Passover. I know, I know, it's all about the wine these days, but it's meant to be a celebration, isn't it? My mum used to tell me the Passover story about how our people were slaves in Egypt, but God rescued us and brought us out into the desert where he fed us with bread, which would be lying on the ground every morning. Imagine that. <laughs> so if you're stuck somewhere, you don't want to be forced to be indoors when there's a plague passing over. Remember, there's always hope. I had hope for Jesus. Or I did. 
I thought he'd rescue us from the Romans, but he's got a funny way of going about it. <laughs> While I was clearing some old plates at the end, Jesus took bread and wine and said to eat and drink these in remembrance of him, as if he was going to die. Isn't he the miracle worker who can raise people from the dead? I don't know what his game is. Anyway, we need to get the room cleared. We've got a dozen tax collectors in for some sort of business breakfast first thing. When Jesus left the upper room, he went into a garden and met the Easter bunny. No, Luke does not say that. They did an Easter egg hunt? No. Jesus was arrested by people from the temple and a mob with swords and clubs. Oh, but why? Jesus went around healing people and being generally kind and brilliant. They were really angry that Jesus was claiming to be God. They wanted to have him executed, but they needed the Romans for that. But that's awful. So they took him to Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor. He couldn't find anything wrong with Jesus and said he could be released. Yay! But Jesus' enemies whipped up the crowd and they demanded that he crucify Jesus and released a man called Barabbas instead. Wow! Lucky old Barabbas! I've really gone and done it this time. I led a rebellion against the Romans. I may have murdered one or two people. And any day now, they're going to come into my cell, <clears throat> lead me away, <coughs> and crucify me. I tried everything. I tried bribing the guards. I tried threatening the witnesses. <laughs> I even tried blackmailing the judge. None of it worked. Not even the jailbreak. Now, here's a tip. If you're going to try and smuggle a metal file into my cell, in some bread, make sure it's in a baguette. It's the right shape. My sister, she tried to hide one in some crusty buns. You can imagine how that panned out. And the guards, they ate the buns as well. They were my buns. Shut up, shut up. Don't I get a final meal? A last request? No, you've been a very naughty boy and you're going down. There's no rescue for me. Not a chance. All right, Barabbas, Pilate's changed his mind. Jesus is going to die. You're going to live. You're free to go. What? Jesus dies and I live? Well, <laughs> who'd have thought it? Someone as rotten as me goes free? Doesn't seem right to me. But that's the way it is. Yeah, well, didn't I say when I was locked in here, there's always hope. No, you said, please don't lock me up. Here's 50 denarii. Treat yourself. Well, I may have said that. <laughs> well, it's a beautiful day. Let's go. Barabbas must have been one happy bunny. Please stop talking about bunnies. We need to talk about what happened to Jesus next. He was t being taken to a place called the Skull. The Skull? Ugh. What happened there? Well, put it this way, it wasn't an ice cream parlour. Imagine an ice cream parlour called the Skull. Zero customers. This is the place Jesus was executed. 
he was nailed to a big wooden cross and left to die with two other criminals. I cannot wait to hear how Jesus got out of this one. He didn't. Jesus died. Oh, but... Oh. And there was a centurion there to make sure it was all done properly. That's not a very nice job to have. Well, that was the weirdest day at work I've ever had. Normally, there are two types, the mumblers and the screamers. The mumblers have given up hope because, let's face it, there's no hope on a cross. But the screamers are in denial, shouting and yelling at everyone and everything. We had a screamer today yelling at me and this Jesus bloke. I have no idea why Jesus was being crucified. He doesn't seem the type. He was a mumbler. And you know what he said up there on the cross? Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Well, I do know what I'm doing. My job. But it was a pretty weird thing to say. Anyway, this screamer, criminal, goes nuts and shouts, Aren't you supposed to be the true king from God? Save yourself and us while you're at it. Then this other criminal jumps in. Not, not literally obvious, cause he's, you know, <laughs> he's not a screamer. He's a dreamer. He says, don't you fear God? We're getting what we deserve, but this man has done nothing wrong. And then, Oh, and I'll never forget this. He says to Jesus, Remember me when you come into your kingdom? Dream on, dreamer. Jesus is on a cross. No hope. But then he says to this dreamer, Today you will be with me in paradise. Well, what's that all about? Jesus can't help anyone from where he is. And then he dies. So that's the end of that. Weirdest day at work ever. Reminds me of my dad's stories from 30 years ago when he was in Bethlehem. Anyway, dinner time and I'm famished. I've had nothing since the stale crusty bun this morning. What a sad story. Anyway, happy Easter, everyone. That's not the end. There is a serious twist you don't want to miss. There is a bunny after all. No, there's no bunny in this story. If you like bunnies, watch Watership Down. Actually, no. If you like bunnies, do not watch Watership Down. I cannot stress that enough. Anyway, back to our story in Luke's Gospel. A man called Joseph of Arimathea took Jesus' body down and laid it in a tomb. Right. This doesn't seem like an improvement. This is more death. You just wait. Sorry, so tired. <sighs> Running to Jerusalem because... We just saw him. Jesus alive. <gasps> he lives. Oh. Oh. Let's back up. <clears throat> we we're on the road to Emmaus talking about what, would hap what had happened. And we saw this guy who asked us, what were we chatting about? And we were like, duh. We were talking about Jesus. And where have you been? Turns out it was Jesus. <laughs> oh, don't spoil I'm it. I'm sorry, I'm oh. sorry. That's the best bit. So we started telling this guy all about how Jesus did amazing things and how he'd, we hoped that he'd rescue us from the Romans. But the temple priest killed him on Friday. 
And then Sunday morning, some of the women went to the tomb. And, and it was gone. Uh, uh, oh. sorry, sorry, sorry. Unbelievable. Anyway, where had, where had he gone? We were all so sad and confused. And, and this dude we met on the road explains how this whole thing had been planned by God and how it's there all the way through the Bible from the beginning. And he told us how it's not from the Romans that we need rescuing, but rescuing from sin and death. And it's how we can be with God forever. Hearts on fire, minds blown. <sighs> so we stopped off for a bite with this guy and the moment he broke the bread, we realised it was Jesus. There he was, alive. <sighs> All our hopes and dreams were there eating bread with us. And then, boom, gone. He just disappeared. Can you believe it? <sighs> Amazing. Can you believe him? Sorry. It's just <sighs> such a brilliant story. And it means Jesus is alive. There is hope. He can rescue us for after all. So we're running back to Jerusalem to tell the others. Come on, come on, let's go. So this means Jesus is alive now? Yep, unlike the Easter Bunny. Someone killed the Easter Bunny? No, the Easter Bunny was never... <sighs> we might discuss that later. This story about Jesus is written in Luke's Gospel, a history of Jesus' life and death and life again. You can read it for yourself. I might just do that. With some chocolate. Good idea. Can I have some? No. Oh, all right then. Let's go and find some. And we should watch that movie. What's it called? Watership Down. No, not Watership Down. Thank you so much to our puppet friends and all the other, the other amazing characters for taking us back to some of the events of the first Easter time 2,000 years ago in Jerusalem. The fact that Jesus really did rise from the dead is the most amazing thing that happened on the most amazing day in history and the world has never been the same since. Some weeks after Jesus rose from the dead, he returned to his heavenly father in heaven. But he said that he could still be with us by his Holy Spirit in our lives every day here. He also said we could always talk to him in prayer any time we wanted to. And he would always be listening. I think that's amazing. So let's pray a short prayer now. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you that you loved us so much that you died for us and that you're so holy and powerful that sin could not hold you. We're so glad you rose from the dead on the first Easter day and that we can know you in our lives every day of our lives. It's been a tough year for so many people with the coronavirus pandemic, so many other things. We pray now for everyone who is still suffering in any way. Please may they know that however difficult things are, there is always hope when we have you, Lord Jesus, in our lives. Please may this Easter time be a time to give thanks for springtime and chocolate eggs, but above all, to give thanks for the Easter message that Jesus is alive. Amen. Now, please, would you join me in saying the most famous Christian prayer, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins 
as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. God bless you and your families through this Easter time and always. And finally, we've got a special song about that first Easter day to finish with. Some of you know it already. Hopefully everybody will be able to join and sing along with it at home. And it's called The Greatest Day in History. Thank you.